again, libs of TikTok. If you don't follow this account, it's a great account. You guys should check this out. Um, they just post, they just find crazy stuff that libs liberals post <laughs> and, and they just put it online. And there's a lot of people who follow it. And people have said, why do we need the parental rights and education bill? There's no reason to have such a thing. If you, people could just easily say, go to libs of TikTok's page. That's simple. So the problem with libs of TikTok is that they expose how crazy the radical left is. Average people just want to pay their bills, take care of their families. They're worried about, you know, how much food is and, and gas is and all that kind of other stuff. But they just want to live their normal lives. And a lot of people don't think that deeply about politics. And a lot of folks on the left have had a very, very, very long game, especially in education and especially like in entertainment. And so they've been exposing some of this stuff, especially on the side of educators. Now the funny and the darndest thing is that a lot of this stuff that they're posting is just stuff from other educators that they post online on their personal accounts. But the fact that people would put this crazy stuff out in the open is just astonishing to me. And maybe people think it's fine because they're in their algorithm and they get likes and clicks and stuff from their and attaboys from people who share their ideology. But when it's exposed to the whole entire world, people are like, that ain't right. That ain't right. So um, Taylor Lorenz. So here's here's a little background. A couple of weeks ago, she was like complaining about online harassment. And here here's a video of her just crying, crying. You feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life. And it's so isolating and terrifying it's horrifying i'm so sorry You're fine. You're <laughs> it's fine. overwhelming it's really hard that's seriously not too long ago and uh in her crusade against online harassment this this is what she said about online harassment so i think i think she's like giving it away why she wrote this and online online harassment is such a is such a it's such a misnomer. Um, I think it's a huge problem because, um, you know, harassment is, is a, is, is a, it's a tool to silence people, especially women and people of color or people mm -hmm. from marginalized, um, identities for speaking out. And it, there's a very intentional, like, goal behind it. It's, it's obviously it's death threats and all of that and rape threats on the daily. And it's not just Twitter. It's like every single surface, right? Like, you know, my cell phone number getting out there, people calling, people, <sighs> harassing my family members, stalking me, like all of that is incredibly terrifying and invasive. Um, and it's bled out into the physical world too, which is even ter more terrifying. Right. Yeah. But uh, to me, I think what, what especially the media needs to understand about this is in terms of protecting their own reporters is this is just a tool like harassment is a tool to kind of discredit and silence journalists and the right wing media plays along with it. So what she means by like, in cases like Tucker or something, he has a really big show. They do, they cover somebody and you, you say your dumb opinions, someone brings it to light and then the internet comes and they give their opinions on your dumb opinions. Now people who go the extra mile and do doxing and all that kind of stuff. That that's not, that's not good at, at all. And I, I don't like stuff like that, but a lot of these people complain about online harassment. Have you ever seen the meme where, where there's like some woman or whatever, probably like a feminist or something and they're scooping some poop and the poop is labeled opinions or whatever, and then they fling it over the wall, and then people fling it back, and they're like, oh no, I'm being attacked! So th that's kind of more along the lines of, of how she's been victimized and harassed, and etc. And I'm not saying other people don't bully and go the distance and, and do other kinds of things, because there's wackadoodles out there, and I'm, I'm not going to waste time defending crazy stuff that people do. Um, but just because you tweet something that's indefensible or stupid um and people respond um doesn't mean that you're you're necessarily being harassed when people are like no you're wrong and this is a bad take etc but it's it's funny that she says that online harassment is really meant as a tool to discredit someone and that that's obviously what the washington post is doing and that's why i feel like this story is really important not just because i like this account not just because i think you guys should follow it um i think it's important because 
what I've been trying to do here, there's a lot of things I, I like to do with Black Teen News, but one of the things I like to do is encourage people to talk to other people, to look at this information, and just to enlighten their friends, their family, their neighbors, because uh, there was that survey or whatever poll that I think was like 62% of Americans are afraid to voice their real opinions. And I'm, I'm not one of those people, and I don't want you to be one of those people. I want us to be able to have conversations, but there are people who are literally too afraid to say anything and are bullied into going along or or, or maybe, not, maybe not even going along at first, but to not say anything while like these radical people on the left keep pushing and pushing, pushing society further and further off the cliff. And if you do finally speak up, you know, you're belittled as a racist, a bigot, a homophobe, whatever. So, so this article this hit piece that the washington post did and why they felt compelled to go after libs of tiktok is because libs of tiktok is exposing a lot of people especially a lot of educators who are gung-ho about educating your children on sexual identity and gender um across all sorts of ages and so on obviously most people including people who are gay and lesbian <laughs> <laughs> and even uh, transgender folks don't feel that that's appropriate. There's just like a really uh, powerful fringe of people who feel very strongly about it. And the dem the mainstream Democrats, for whatever reason, Biden has hitched onto this dying star. And then journalists and activists who really want to I go along, I guess, with, with whatever the Democrats are saying because they're carrying water for them. And so they want to label lives of TikTok, which is really just exposing these people as, as some kind of bigoted sort of person. So they feel that it's newsworthy. And it is a big account. It has over 600,000 followers. So I'm not saying doing a story about their sort of influence isn't newsworthy. However, they could have written some of the stuff that they wrote about without exposing who this person was and it was obvious that that's what they were trying to do and the reason why they want to expose this woman and she said she's in a safe place right now and she thanked everybody for the love and support uh, of people outreaching and whatever but they want to scare the next person out of being the next libs of tiktok that that's what it's about like i'll never forget like someone was like i can't they told me like i can't say all the stuff that you say because people will call me a racist and i'm just like People, people, people call me a uh, uh, Uncle Tom, and then it was just like an awkward sort of stare. <laughs> I was like, people are gonna come. They come at me, so I, I just would like to not be alone. I will stand alone if I have to to speak the truth. I've already like settled that within myself. I'm firm in my beliefs, and I have to be. If I have to be alone while I'm belittled and whatever, etc and then they try to silence me i'm not going to be silent like i've already committed to that but it would be a lot easier and we could get a lot done and we could fight off the left if more people were just willing to stand up and say you know what we're not crazy the world hasn't gone that far they want you to feel alone and that's why they attack libs of tiktok like this so christina pushaw who i think that's how you say her last name from from florida she's a ronda santa spokesperson she, she got this um, email from Taylor Lorenz and they said, hi, Christina, I'm a tech reporter at the Washington Post. We are running a story exposing the woman behind the libs of TikTok account. Notice she said expose. Notice she said expose. People were like highlighting that that's a pretty aggressive word there. <laughs> it's not a puff piece, it's just exposure. Now, why do you want to expose this woman? Again, it's, it's not no, noteworthy to expose her. Or to mention that she was Jewish, to you know, to anything, to, to her, her sex or gender, her name, that wasn't where she lives. This woman went to her the house of her relatives. That's a picture of her at her relative's house. This person who was crying about online harassment. Our story mentions your interactions with the account and praise of it. If you'd like to offer comment, please let me know within the next hour. You can give me a ring if you prefer. That That's something that they do, these reporters, they will give you like something, hey, are you going to comment? Um, you, you have an hour to do so because they're hoping that you don't see it in time or whatever. And they'll run the story like, oh, Ron DeSantis had no comment. <laughs> Ron DeSantis' office had no comment. That's what they like to do. So anyway, she did end up responding. 
She said, relationship with the account. What do you mean by that? I follow, like, and retweet libs of TikTok. My interactions with the account are public. She does a great job exposing the degeneracy by showcasing liberals in their own words. It's a shame that any journalist would want to ruin her life. And so they actually went to another account with a similar name and kind of threatened them. <laughs> he said, hi, just, I'm just following up here. You've been mentioned as administrative lives of TikTok account on Twitter. And I need to turn in my story today. Is that your account? Please let me know ASAP because you're being implicated as starting a hate campaign against LGBTQ people. If you're unaffiliated with the account, I want to be sure to set the record straight in the story. If it is your account, I love to speak to you about it. I'm on blank. If you want to give me a ring, let me know and hope to hear from you. What if there was like no response from that person? You're just going to run it and implicate them? <laughs> Is this journalism? I have a deadline, so you better respond or I'm going to smear you. <laughs> Is this journalism? It's definitely not ethical, which people are pointing out journalistic ethical standards. You're supposed to do the least amount of harm. Again, she could have created her story about this very influential account that that people from the governor's office in Florida have have retweeted or 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 liked or interacted with that Tucker Carlson has interviewed libs of TikTok and um identity wasn't revealed or anything on that show either or that uh Laura Ingram and other people have done stories after they've highlighted things on their account it is an influential account it's not a small account it has like 600,000 followers last I looked over that. So it's, I'm not saying reporting on the account isn't newsworthy. However, exposing this woman as, in her words, doxing her, is, is that appropriate? And so here's some irony for you. Taylor in the past, this is a past tweet. I know you're joking, but doxing, stalking, trying to hurt and smear people's loved ones, threatening them, it's not okay in any situation. People on here who constantly stoke these politicized outrage campaigns want to dismiss it, but it shouldn't be dismissed. It has very real consequences. But here's here's Taylor today. Just This is a meme like uh, that people use all the time, right-wing media, the most basic reporting practices. Is this doxing? So she's mocking people for calling it doxing. When she went like on found out the name via like a website that the libs of TikTok or whatever was related to and use um, information associated with that uh, URL to confirm who the person was. Lying and trying to say that Glenn uh, Grinwald is the person who actually confirmed the person's identity. Um, Cause in the article it says when a reporter called the phone number registered to Rachel X, uh real estate profile and lives of TikTok us, the woman who answered hung up after the reporter identified herself as calling from the Washington post, the woman at the address listed uh, her name in the Los Angeles uh, declined to identify herself on Monday night, a tweet from Glenn Grinwald confirmed to the house that was invited to belong to uh, Rachel X family. And so, um, they're saying that it was publicly available online, but it was he who confirmed it. And he said, this is a stupid viral lie being spread by Taylor. She announced she intended to publish Libs of TikTok's name after Libs of TikTok provided proof. Taylor went to her relative's house and asked me to report it to deter Taylor from stalking more people. So she tried to pin this on Glenn as if Glenn was the one who confirmed. <laughs> but but she already had the person's name. Here's a piece of the article that Chris, uh, Christina, the spokesperson from Ron DeSantis, what laughed at. By March, lives of TikTok was directly impacting legislation. DeSantis's press secretary, Christina Pshaw, credited the account with opening her eyes and informing her views on the state's restrictive legislation that bans discussion of sexual sexuality or gender identity in kindergarten through the third grade, referred to by critics as the Don't Say Gay Bill. Which it's it's funny to me when people do not, and this is a journalist not using the name parental rights and education bill, still using the don't say gay. Um, she and libs of TikTok have interacted with each other over the last 138 times publicly, according to a report by Media Matters. Oh, Media Matters. When asked by the Post about her relationship with the account, Bushaw wrote, I follow, like, and retweeted libs of TikTok. My interactions with the account are public and ad added that she's a strong supporter of its mission. So um, Taylor just thought it was funny that, I'm sorry, not Taylor, uh, Christina thought it was funny that that she thinks press secretaries like right legislation. There's a clip of Ron DeSantis when people were kind of like talking about the bill. I don't, I don't know how 
interactive they were prior to it actually going through the the legislature because he was in an interview and he was complaining about sort of the press for it. And he's like, they were talking about, talking about, it. and like, it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. And he said, and he looked at the bill and it was K through three. And he's like, why would anyone be talking to kids that age about K through three? So he, he, it doesn't seem like they were in the ground floor with trying to get this thing through, which by the way, lives of TikTok did post a video talking about one of the reasons why, uh, um, the bill was going through and there was a story again of a father whose daughter was indoctrinated or whatever they were secretly keeping the gender confusion from him and he didn't find out that his daughter was going through that until she tried to hang herself so and and you can say and i've heard people say well he's a bad father because he didn't know people intimidate kids kids make the wrong decisions you might have had adults tell them not to tell you wouldn't understand all this kind of other garbage so please do not pretend like kids just always make the right decisions and um because something like that happened that he's a terrible dad like you're sick and disgusting if you go that route you don't know more details th than basically that so so don't defame that man who was like sobbing over his daughter possibly dying you're sick absolutely tragically sick but that's not the only story. That's not the only story. The Little Johns, um, in, also in Florida, told stories about uh, how teachers went to their child and put it in their, the it, ideas in their kid's head about not sharing stuff with the parents. And they had to go back, the parents had to go back and forth trying to get information from the school that they were obviously trying to hide. And they asked questions. They had like a, a a several page like identity kit or something. And they, they were asking like questions like what bunk would you like to stay in over on overnight trips? I'd be, Oh my gosh. I was so mad when I heard that you're asking children, which rooms they want to bunk in. You think your little girl, your son are going to be bunking in the girls and, and boys cabins, but you're telling me they're mixed because people get to say, I feel like I'm a girl tonight. <laughs> Let's sleep with some chicks. And there's even stories where where teachers have been in different like cabins associated with what they feel like. This is no small stuff. And though the lives of TikTok is exposing a lot of this stuff, to, to say that they're responsible for writing legislation because the press secretary for Ron DeSantis like retweets and likes some stuff. I don't think they deserve that much credit, though I do love them to pieces. I really do. Uh, here, here's something else. On March 8, a Twitter account called Libs of TikTok posted a video of a woman uh, teaching sex education to children in Kentucky, calling the woman in the video predator. The next evening, the sample, the same clip was featured on Laura Ingram's Fox News program, prompting the host to ask, when did our public schools, any schools, become what essentially grooming centers for gender identity radicals? Um, we covered that story on the show, which I, I, um, I can't remember if I saw that. I think Chris Rufo maybe posted it. I, I don't know if it was lived at TikTok, but I'm sure they retweeted it. Um, I can't, I don't know who posted it first, but the sexy summer camp, uh, that was some gross stuff like about self abortions and masturbation and. All, all kinds of stuff that was just really, really not appropriate for, for kids. You know, like get down with yourself, explore your own body. <sighs> Masturbation is really healthy and I recommend it to people of all ages, all ages. I ended up, I think, getting shut down after that exposure, but they don't, they don't like this account because it's effective, really. Um, th that's really the issue with the libs of TikTok and why they want to shut them down. So. Democracy dies in darkness and they, they want you to die. Like not literally, unless you're like a newborn baby. Well, not a newborn, I guess unborn, but um, <laughs> kind of a different topic. Um, they, they want you to figuratively die. They want you to just be enslaved with what they tell you that if you, they want you to wear a mask, you don't question the science because they told you what you have to do and you just do what they do. Um, that you have to not look into your children's education and what they're learning if if you you just you just breed them you send them to school and their liberal minded teachers will inject them to with whatever garbage they will come to resent you and they will move on to college and continue to resent you and your ideals and um they will either separate 
from you or they will bring you to their side. They've played a very long game for a very long time on the left, especially in the realm of education and also in entertainment. And you're seeing a lot of that stuff kind of come out with Disney right now. They don't want you to know about the things that they're doing. They just want you to one day wake up and realize everything that you knew and that you loved is different. And that if you don't change, then you're just a bigot, <laughs> but they want you to be a powerless bigot. So that's why they did this smear against Libs of TikTok. Seth Dillon from the uh, Babylon Bee said the exposure of Libs of TikTok isn't journalism. It's pure intimidation. They're threatened by her effectiveness. So they hope to silence her by making her too afraid to continue which is what I said, which I think everybody can see, which I think Taylor kind of admitted in the old video, but obviously that's what the Washington Post wants to do. They want to raise the cost of doing her work so high that she has no choice but to quit. But I think they'll be surprised by her resolve. She's afraid, as anyone would be in these circumstances, but she's also determined to not be bullied, threatened, or harassed into silence. That takes remarkable courage that few people possess. I think they'll also be surprised by the support she receives. I want them to know that she won't be canceled from her job because this is her job now. I've worked out a deal with her so that in turn her heroic high-risk work into a career. I, I'm reading this live. <laughs> I haven't pre-read this. So that makes me so happy. <laughs> they may have exposed her, but they'll never stop her. Long live lips of TikTok. That's amazing. This is really touching and amazing um, how people are reaching out to lips of TikTok and other people to try to protect them, to keep them from being silent. So um, I, I appreciate that so much. Don't be too afraid to do something, to speak out against these crazy people who want to destroy our country and they want to use your children to do it like that that's what really really bothers them president trump was not wrong when he said that the press was like the enemy of the people like i know there's good journalists out there who care about their ethical standards taylor lorenz is not one of those people and they were so the washington post it's funny because they're doing so many they're doing pieces and stuff about elon musk and how and and the elitists were doing hit pieces and stuff about why it would be bad for someone like Elon to have control of Twitter is a, this billionaire oligarch or whatever. When it's like, dude, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, the guy who has, owns Amazon owns the Washington Post. And then you have like Zucker who influenced uh, the elections, basically, you know, they, they wrote pieces like, admitting like how they had such a big influence in hand of our, our elections and they're okay with that because those people are on their side but when you get someone like elon who's just like hey i don't want you to silence the babylon bee for pointing out that rachel levin um is a man that's not hate speech i understand that you find it offensive and hateful because you don't like it um but the truth is is a hateful to people who like lies mm -hmm.